Hi, this is Miss Litton, and this is my wonderful period one AP Bio class. Say hi. Hello. And if you have not done part one, don't watch this. Okay. Do part one first. We this is a recording of part two. So um, when when you were here last time when we talked about this lab. Um, you started off by observing some phenomena. Um, so you had bad food at a good party. And how did you, what did you do in that portion of the last part one? Who can tell me what they did in part one of the team? Yeah. Perfect, okay, so you, and that's exactly what they would do. They would do interviews, they wanna see where, you know, who ate what. Does everybody have a perfect memory? No. no. Okay. So that's the best they can do with that data. And they sorted that out. You sorted it out on a chart. You could have done it different ways. What did you come to think? Again, don't, if you haven't done part one, don't listen to us. Um, what did you think was the culprit of the, had the bacteria in it? Five layers of beans. Five layers of beans. Okay. Is that what you all came up with? All right. So five layer bean dip. So our job now is to analyze that five layer bean dip. But there are how many layers? Five. Five layers, okay? Oh. So, <laughs> that's a problem. Okay, so you are gonna learn about the five layer bean dip. You are gonna learn about how those layers are generated when they go to put them together. You're gonna learn about controls, both positive controls and negative controls. No matter what, what is a control? It is a what? Standard, give me another description. Unchanged. Unchanged, give me another one. Basis of comparison. There's some information. And we have talked about controls um, where you only change one variable in the lab, right? And so then you, you're relating back to that control. But you're going to get also a positive control you're going to read about in this lab. A positive control and a negative control. So I want, I want to let you know about that. Just be ready for it. I'm going to go through the lab map with you. Once I finish kind of setting up the lab map with you, you're gonna go ahead and make your gels, and I'll talk about the process of making gels in case you forgot, because you wanna give them time to firm up. It, and I'm just gonna tell you right now, you're cooking it individually, and we'll just work our way from lab station one all the way to lab station eight. You, it'll, you'll only cook it 20 seconds. And so make sure you follow those instructions, and I will go over that with you in just a minute and you're gonna pour your gel and then you're just gonna let it sit quietly so it can firm up so when you're ready to run your gel, um, it, it's good to go. You're gonna be labeling a microfuse rack. I'll go over the equipment with you. You're gonna load and then run your gels. You're gonna photograph your gels. Do you remember doing this last year with foundations and how you can take a picture right through? And then you're gonna load that picture up into your digital lab map and label what you put in each well hole and then you can go ahead and do your analysis. So let's take a look at the lab map first. I need to make it bigger. Okay, all the documentation, I, I don't want you to read it right now, okay, because it's not a race. It's like we want to make sure we understand it well. But all your documentation that you need is right here where you follow that link. And step two, you're going to just respond to these questions that you get from reading through that documentation. Um, step three, you're gonna talk about each layer and take some notes on what you've learned about that layer and what, con what concerns you have. Like, is there a layer that's more concerning to you than others and why? And I want you to make some predictions about that. This would be like forming a what when you make a prediction? It'd be your hypothesis. So write what you think is here, and I want you to highlight, you know how to highlight in Google Docs. I wanna highlight the layer that you think, if you were gonna guess as a team, if you were gonna predict, I bet you it's this layer, okay? Now, you're doing this period of one, and you're gonna have an answer at the end of today, okay? At the end of our class period. I want period three to not come in with any, you know, don't tell them, it's this layer, okay? Because that spoils it for them. So. Make sure not to share that with your, um, with your period three classmates, okay? Now, these are all, remember I told you I had to do about a billion tubes, okay? These are your choices of tubes that you're gonna have to choose from on what you wanna run. And it tells you what each layer is, okay? And you're gonna decide what one you want to do. 
I want to remind you about a ladder. If you remember from your running from last time, remember when you run a gel, um, you're taking portions, segments of DNA, and remember they're running through that gel, and which pieces will travel the fastest? Small, Small pieces will travel the fastest. So you need a comparison or a control in your gel itself, at least one. And that is usually what is a ladder, because these are known size fragments of DNA. They're very expensive, and that is your basis of comparison. You line up where did, because you can make predictions about fragment size, knowing what fragments are in your control, in your ladder. And you have two ladders to choose from. You might one, you might want the other, you might want both ladders. That's what your team is going to decide. You're setting up your run, so you, you get to decide that. Um, and when you do decide what you want to run, these are your wells, okay? From top to bottom, as you're looking at your well, looking right at it, the well holes are going to be on your left. And remember, DNA, when it's cut, has what charge? Ne good, <laughs> negative. And it's going to be drawn towards the positive, positive in the gel. If you set it up incorrectly, and I will tell you, I have done that before wasn't paying attention, okay? So my gel is here, and I had the positive on the other side, and instead of running through the gel, it ran the short distance between the well hole and the edge, <laughs> right off into the solution. No analysis could be done with that, okay? So you have to pay attention. These particular, these are their early, many ones, early boxes, um, so they don't have a marked, I marked which side is positive with tape. Now they sell them and they've got like positive signs, but we can manage, okay? We were early implementers. So um, the well numbers, you're gonna decide top to bottom how you're gonna load them. And you're gonna put um, the name of the sample and then why you chose that, okay? Why, why you chose that particular sample, okay? Then you're going to um, make your gel, you'll, you'll make your gel early on. You're, uh, you'll explain this part, just read it. I'm gonna go over that with you. Um, and then you're going to insert a photo here, and then to the left of that, you're going to label what's in each one. Um, when I did it, you get a color, my, you know, because my pic phone takes color pictures. When I decided, and I ran them yesterday, the samples are really good. Um, and when I took a picture, it was a color picture. I then cropped it because you, when you take your picture, you get the edges of the well hole, you know, the chamber box itself and you just want to crop out just the critical part of your gel, including your DNA will have moved out of your well holes, but you want those well holes for references. You know, like you can label over the top of the holes one through nine so you know which one it is. So you just need the well holes in the gel, not the extraneous part. And then for visualization pictures, I had my phone do, you know, I can put the, what are the different, uh, you know, you can pick the colors or the shadows. Yeah. What's that called? Filter, Filter thank you. Yeah. I, I changed my photo to black and white, right? And you can do black and white or not, but I, I just did that because it was real easy to see the difference and, and where it, it, sh it was showing up. Um, so insert your photo here. Then you're going to go ahead, base, and make a claim about the contaminated layer or layers um, that contain the Shigella that had this, that particular bacterium in it. So make a claim. You know, it's a statement. This layer of layers. Evidence, what, what are you to use for your evidence? The results from gel electrophoresis. That would be your photo, right? Then you're going to make a reason. You're going to give an explanation from that evidence and then um, identify any errors that you might have had, like we didn't load it in the right order or this is what we did here, whatever that might be. And then conclusions. Did your prediction ma uh, match your evidence? Where, where is your prediction? Where did you make that prediction? Yeah, in the table above, when you predicted just from reading about it, what one you think might be contaminated. Okay? And then you're going to submit that to me today. I think you can easily do that. Okay, so let's go back here and review a couple of things. Um, one, there, uh, the, tubes, um, the tubes are not labeled except for the very top of them. Okay, remember I made 174 tubes. I could not individually label all those tubes. They do come in different colors. They are labeled in, when I pull them out, I have a tray when you come shopping at the DNA store. Okay. The Lord help me not spill the tape of it for Okay, so they're all here. 
okay? Mm -hmm. And um, I labeled, um, oh my gosh, that almost slipped off. Okay, so I labeled this as S. Okay, so if we look on here, S, S, which one is S? It's the salsa, okay? This is the salsa. So if you choose to run salsa, this is the salsa one. Now, right here, I, I took a shot of all of them lined up so you would know. Salsa is yellow with a slash through it, whereas guacamole is just yellow, okay? This is clear, pink with a dot, solid pink, blue with a slash, blue, green with a slash, pink with a dot and a slash, and the reason is they send two tubes that are like pink and lavender, totally hard to differentiate. Um, so that's why I have to have dots and slashes, um, and then just a slash on the top, okay? So they are labeled here, but if you take it out, you're gonna have to go, oh, okay, what one is this one? Oh, it's that, okay? Mm -hmm. and, you, and also, I gave you a frame of reference. I'm gonna smooth these over here because I could just see me knocking them over and that would really make me cry. Okay, um, also I had to spin the tubes down and when I loaded them in there, I put all the DNA at the very bottom. There's only 10 microliters of DNA in there. And so I'm gonna, you're gonna see that in a video. Instead of setting your microfibe header at 10, I would set it at 9.9 because .9 you'll get less air bubbles in it. You know what I mean? Because it's probably not all of it is going to be able to be picked up. Um, and so I also made another one here to show you when you decide this has all um, the marks on it. It has all, all 11, but you're only going to choose nine. So what I did uh, um, is just put a strip of tape and I put tape in your boxes. You can just put a strip of tape on and not label each every single one and then go pick up the tube and put the nine that you pick that you label next to that one. And then this would be the order in which you would run it as well. Does that make sense? So this would be like well one, well two, well three, but I have all 11 on here. Oh my gosh, it's gonna anal retentively block, see, see? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I feel better now, okay, it's stressing me out. Okay, um, so now let's talk about what equipment you have i actually pulled this from our other genetic engineering lab but you basically have the same thing so you have a gel box power for your gel box this is where you're going to get some solution to put in your gel so there's a current running through the gel um, you don't have that you have tips leave the tip box closed unless you're actually um, getting a tip out of there um, and you need to restock the tip box when you're done with clean hands. This is for your trash for ejecting, right? Never dip without a fresh tip. You're always gonna eject your tip and get a fresh one. And um, this is the rack that you'll put the tape on and line up your microfuse tubes. Now, as far as making the gel, um, here's a little video I made just to explain how to uh, make the gel. When you put the tank in, there's only one way it can go in. I want you to look to see that your disc that you put in right here is on the far side away from the positive okay then when you bring in the gel you can see the well holes you want to make sure they're open to you and line those up with the gray disc here goes right in here and then you just pour the solution over the top you're going to load on this side and the DNA or dyes will run towards the positive. You want the solution to barely cover. You can turn on the light so you can see the well holes. And that's it. Okay, do you remember that? Okay, now I wanna tell you something. On this, this is something I make for the first day um, when you're doing it. So do you see how the plate in here is gray? And that's because, do you remember when you learned how to do um, I can't remember if you did, if you were in my class, I had you run a real practice gel, but um, you can't, you do dyes the first time and they don't glow, there's nothing to make it glow with the DNA, so that I put a gray disc down there, but when you're running this, this disc in all of your gel boxes should be black. If it's not, tell me, because otherwise it makes it hard for you to see, so they should all be black discs and we can trade that out if you need to. Okay. Um, couple of things on um, micropipe headers. I'm just going to remind you, okay, on micropipe headers, how you, how you use them, okay? 
So remember, there's two stops on the micropipetter. You can feel it. I can feel there's the first stop, I get a little bit of resistance, and then the second stop. So you never dip without a fresh tip. So this part never goes into the solution. And you need to work collaboratively as a team to make sure nobody screws up. One of these micropipetters got broken. It's team five, so you have my micropipetter in there if you're team five, okay? So what you're gonna wanna set it at, I loaded 10 microliters in each tube, but what did I tell you I wanted you to set it at? 9.9. Yeah, so double check that you put it at 9.9. .9. And did I, bio buddy? Yes. Oh, good. Okay, so now I'm right, look, left-handed, right-handed. It's all good, okay? And what I do is I push down to the first stop, then I go in and I put the, t I watch that the tip is in the tiny tube. Okay, I watch that it's in there and I follow the solution down. Don't put it in and put it all the way flush to the bottom because then you'll get a little seal and you won't pick up all the solution. So you kind of have to, so you push, push the air out, go in, slowly suck it up. Today, you are never gonna go to the second stop. And the reason is when I load gels, I don't give the extra oomph to push it out because it pushes an air bubble into the gel and can kind of cause some of the solution to rise up. So when I go and I'm lined up to the right one, I do the crane method where I put both my elbows on the table and I use it to support my hand like this. So you, you have different strategies you can use, but then I come down right over the top. I just make sure I'm just barely in the lip of the gel and you can kind of move it around there and you can tell. If you go like this on puncture, you're gonna put all your DNA down at the bottom. If you start to feel yourself shaking, stop, back off, okay? It's like hitting grass in your backswing when you're golfing. Just stop and reset and hit again because it's gonna throw you off. So just stop for a second and go, okay. And then go back down and just don't be nervous, right over the well hole, and then go to that first stop and all of it should be in there. I have little practice um, dip, dip, <laughs> discs. So if you want to, dun 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 dun. I have um, a little okay. practice discs. <laughs> um, so if you want to, if you want, I have blank microfuse tubes or I have colored ones. I can get that out. If you want to practice, I'll put some practice materials up. If you want to go, let's just review how we do it so we don't do it the first time with your DNA. That's probably a really good idea. I'll put some colored, uh, you know, some colored dyes and some discs up here. And I would just practice so you all feel comfortable with it. Do not abdicate gel loading. You have nine to load. And there's four or five people in your team, so everybody should load at least one of them, okay? If you think somebody's weak, give them one that you don't think it's in, you know what I mean? So you're not allowed to do the critical one. You're just, you're weak, you know, that's okay, okay? Survival of the fittest, weak, okay? All right, so, so we set it, right? Set it, double check, first stop, go in, suck it up, Crane method, make sure we're in the right well hole. First stop again. I don't do the mm. Come out, eject the tip. Okay? All right, you got that. Whose team is this? This is team four. I have your microbiome better. All right. So, like I said, um, whatever ones you decide, line them up, put the tape on there. Thank you. Put the tape on there and keep them right next to it and then make sure you're loading it in that order. Um, and then um, this is something I made yesterday to review on gel loading. Hi guys, remember to set this correctly. I'm putting it at 9.9 because .9 I only put 10 microliters in each tube. So that'll probably avoid getting an air bubble. And make sure you get a fresh tip. Make sure it's on there securely. Make sure you're picking up the right tube. And then go ahead and put the tip, go to the first stop, first stop only. Put the tip down in the solution and then slowly you want to bring the solution up in. Watch the solution go in, all the way in, okay? Then I'm ready to go right into the gel. I'm counting down to make sure, yep, I want it in the fourth spot. I'm going right over the top, I'm not puncturing. And because I'm going into a gel, I'm only going to go to the first stop. Then I'm gonna pull it out before I lift my thumb. Okay. So you understand the part about, I should show you the outtakes because Ms. Chevalier recorded that. The first, yeah, we, that was 
the tenth three because we kept <laughs> laughing. Um, but um, critical. I've seen people do a great job loading a gel, and they're like kind of relieved, and they go down to the first job, and they're like, cool, and then they go like this, oh. and then you know, and so um, <laughs> and then they're like, okay. Um, so, so that's notice. I came out, and then I lifted my thumb up off of it. Okay. Now, um, you have different roles. Um, I think we're good on that. You know how to work. Just reminding. Um, and I think we're good. Does anybody have any questions before I set you loose? Okay, love you very much. Do a great job. Be scientific. <laughs>